folks, Channel 7 is reporting that the hurricane is headed for Houston. Now, now, here are the four most important items you'll need to survive. First and foremost, batteries. Well, you'll need them for your flashlight and your, your, your portable radio. Oh, I, I guess that goes without saying that you'll need a flashlight and a portable radio, right? So, uh, make that six things you need, not four. A second, a can opener. Well, no, no not a second, really. Uh, more like to see. Batteries, flashlight, portable radios. A fourth, yes, a fourth. Now, you need the can opener. Uh, now, I, I'm talking about a, a hand operated can opener. Well, you'll need that in, in case your electricity goes out, right? A uh, 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 third, well, well, no, not third, really. Let's see. Uh, a fifth, I guess. Water. A fourth and... No, 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 not fourth. Uh, six. Oh, Jesus, I don't know. Whatever. You're gonna need cans of food. Lots and lots of cans of food. You know, food that you can open with a can opener. A hand-generated can opener. Hand-operated can opener. And generated. Shit, I should have retired after Hurricane Carla. <laughs> Those TV fuckers. <laughs> they always leave out the most important thing. The most important thing is ice! That's the thing you need the most during a hurricane, is ice! And of course, the booze to go along with the fucking ice. <laughs> I looked all over the neighborhood for ice. All the 7-Elevens sold out. Sold out. How do you sell out of ice? It's just fucking frozen water. <laughs> Next, I went to the convenience store in a sea part of town. And there was this Pakistani guy or Indian or whatever. You know what I mean. Didn't used to be like that when I was younger. Man, how times have changed. Anyway, it's giving me the eagle eye. It's pretty freaking scary. It's you know, beady white eyes just like shoot out of cat's head like fiery hot bullets. This highly red-faced white woman comes into the store. <laughs> she appears to be angry or frustrated or drunk or all of the above that I am mentioning. She is freakingly frightening, looking like she's ready to shoot someone dead on their feet with her fearsome eyes all bloodshot and deadly. And she's looking all over like she's, you know, casting for the joint. I guess he thought I was casing the joint. I am telling you, she was one scaresome bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the poor fucker has to be wary, what with all the robberies and the shootings. I mean, how would you like to make your living at a shoot 'em up 7 Eleven? Two years ago, Two hookheads all drugged up come into the store. One of them hits my wife over the head with a hammer. A frigging hammer, I'm telling you. Anyone who commits a robbery using a hammer as their weapon of choice has to be, by any of Mr. Webster's definitions, a reprehensible low-life bag of scum. The other hookhead was a woman, looking so much like this scary bitch. All breathing hard like she was just having been screwed. So I look at the scary bitch. This one, not the one from the hammer. But I don't see anything on her. No gun, not even a purse. Definitely no hammer. But she is waving a five dollar bill in her hand like it's the old red, white, and blue. And oh, I know what she's wondering. Why was he suspicious? I'm a law-abiding citizen and American to boot. So, I uh, flash my Lincoln at it. And finally, boy, do I have his attention. You know, those Indians aren't dumb. He knew what I was after. The ice compartment was sitting back against the back wall, and I could see, oh, God, I could see that there was only one bag left. One bag! The 
that there was this woman and her little boy in front of me. God damn it, making a beeline for the most sought-after bag of ass in the whole fucking U.S. of A. But the Lord was with me. The kid stumbled. <laughs> and me? I got my fucking bag of ice! Yes! The old bitch stuck her foot out and tripped Billy. Can you believe that shit? Tripped a helpless little boy for a bag of ice. Billy fell and skinned his knee on that cold wet floor and I was so scared he'd get an infection. How do you make a doctor's appointment in a hurricane, I ask you? I looked down at Billy's bleeding knee and in seconds it had grown to the size of a honeydew. Oh, something awful. So I turned to her, and you know what she said. She asked me for some eyes to put on her little bastard's knee. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I told her to use some cold beer and a towel. I'm swinging in you, my hard one eyes. There was no way I was bringing those beers home. Nick is a recovering alcoholic, and with this hurricane out there, he's as nervous as a snowman in July. I couldn't break those hands home. I needed him sober. And then it hit me. You know what would work just as well? Ice cold diet mountain dew. So I got my bag of ice and handed the clerk my five bucks. I mean, be so sorry to have to be telling you this. The fucker says. But that ice which sold for a dollar eighty-nine in the good times. Well, now. They are the bad times. <laughs> she was a dadly bit upset. Oh, that is nothing but price gouging. I've got half a mind to report you to the state of Turkey. What? I believe in the empirical laws of economics. I believe in the immutable dynamics of supply and demand. And since our supply of ice was peckering out, and the demand for ice was through the proverbial attic, I became an American capitalist. Big time. <laughs> Overnight, so to speak. So to speak, only because <coughs> it wasn't night, but rather a wet, moist, humid, Houston afternoon. I thought my five bucks was going to find me two bags of ice if I could find them. Now i got to go back out to the car and get some more money! Oh, my greasy goodness! Oh, my greasy gonads! <laughs> Fortunately, I keep some quarters for parking in my glove compartment. And I say, thank God, as I'm rummaging through, because I have enough quarters to pay for the bag of ice. Oh, thank you. Very much thank you. Well, I go back into the store, and whoa, the fucking ice is gone. Oh, Jesus, Betty and Joseph, the way they talk. The fucking ice is gone, and so are the woman and her bastard child. And the Indian, the fucking Indian, is standing there smiling, holding a $10 bill in his proud little hands. Alexander Hamilton, who, by the way, was not born in this country. What? Alexander Hamilton, if he were alive today, could not be held eligible to be president of the United States because he was born in the West Indies. And yet, the grim countenance of this founding father graces the front of the American $10 bill. America is great or what? Yes, indeed. Do you remember how we were immediately after 9-11? Yes, I know, my child. The hurricane. Oh, we talking about another impending catastrophe, yes, father. Yes, yes, I know the hurricane is coming. <laughs> No, Father, we're talking about the fu the, the freaking shortage of ice. My child, he says. After 9-11, we were one unified country. Catholics, Protestants, Jews, even Muslims. I'm Hebrew. Re whatever. <laughs> Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Liberals and Conservatives, men and women, have I left anybody out? Gays, lesbians, transgenders? <laughs> no, I haven't. Just the very curious. We were one country, all of us. 
We all went down and bought tiny American flags and affixed them to our cars. I'm remembering this affixation. The unfurling and flying of the American flag. Why, son, did you go out and buy a flag? Yes, bandit. Father. Whatever. <laughs> I'm remembering well after 9-11. This Yahoo, not the internet guy, he and his cahoots come into the store and start to haul me out, thinking I am Muslim. I am Hindu, I tell them, but they don't understand. They think I am Indian. And in a way, they are right, but in real factuality, I am white and American. And when I see behemoths like this, it fills me with self loathsomeness You see, my parents worked for the State Department in New Delhi, and my beloved Indian nanny, Anika, taught me English. They hear the accent and draw conclusions. To them, accent and skin are the same. Hindu and Muslim are the same. Foreign and enemy are the same. We are all Americans, but we are not. And now, I am facing possible decapitation or worse, decastration. <laughs> so I yell out, I hate Muslims too. And they become so adult they let me go. I do not tell them my wife is Muslim. Why add to their rattleness? I want to keep my head and my balls. <laughs> As for the flag, yes, I went out intending to purchase one. We all went out and got the grand old flag. It was a moment of unity I'll never forget. How long did it last? It doesn't matter. Nine months, I'm guessing. It was a moment when I understood the magnificence of America. I went out to purchase my own flag, my $4.99 flag. Only now, it was $24.99, <laughs> plus extra for the attachment, plus tax. And that is why my eyes is seven dollars. I did not buy their flag, but they were by my eyes. When this hurricane hits, we will come together as one family, united in our common Americanism and in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Or Buddha. Hey, Lord Vishnu and Devi bless you, and on behalf of my wife, Allah too. So many gods. And of course, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Our differences will evaporate. Jesus Christ! Exactly! I came for ice, not a sermon! Let me tell you, the priest says. When Mother Superior found out about our impending doom, she took some bottles of water I had in storage and froze them. <laughs> what a resourceful woman is this superior mother. I wonder what makes her better than all the other mothers. <laughs> the mother of our mother, so to speak. So, I'll be glad to share the arts. But I request you not use it for questionable purposes. I don't understand, I said. Well, Mother Superior didn't know that I had blessed the water as holy water. Well, now actually it's holy ice. <laughs> you mean like for vampires and shit? <laughs> Baptisms and blessings, mostly. We don't get much call for vampires anymore. Alas. So, does this holy ice mean that I can't use it with scotch? <laughs> My child, I don't see why not. If Jesus could bless the water and turn it into wine, I can't imagine him frowning on a splash of scotch on the holy rocks. <laughs> well, well, I don't normally like to drink this early, but uh, right about now, Big Ben is striking eight. <laughs> wow. Let's go, Father! <laughs> uh, Bandit, uh, your purchase. Oh, yes. <clears throat> My Newsweek. <laughs> <laughs> Newsweek, otherwise known as barely legal jugs. <laughs> Celibacy is so contrary to another superior mother, Mother Nature. The proof? The proof is in the custard. We don't all talk like this, you know. But it's what the customers seem to expect, and I'm working on the boys for open mic night at the comedy showcase down the, down the road. They love my Patel, the 7-Eleven night manager. Check this out. It was saddening and depressing that the embittered and scary bitch did not have more capital on her personage. I am thinking we could have negotiated a deal. But life in corporate America goes on. And so, I go to my secret storage. I take out a bag of ice and I place it in the cooler. Just the one bag, the one single, lonely, and very precious bag of ice. 
and the price goes up from 7 to 10 American dollars. May God and everyone else please bless the USA. <laughs>
But as ways go, it's, you know, it's not a bad way to go. When are you going to tell them why we're here? What? You should have told them that. When are you going to tell them why we're here? You should have told them that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, uh, uh, Joseph Lester and I are here at the behest of our... Just, just, just get on with it. Get on with it. Tell us more. All right, all right, all right, all right. At the behest of our retirement home social director, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Cardenas. Cardigan. Uh, Mr. Perez thinks everybody's Hispanic. Yeah. You mean her name isn't really Cardenas? It's Cardigan? Yeah, because she looks good in a tight sweater. <laughs> Don't be disrespectful. Uh, uh, Miss Cardenas. Ask the three of us if we would explain to you folks what keeps us going. So that you men at the Shearmore Retirement Home should follow our lead. So if you think we've done all right, that, that is. The women will have their own meeting next week. Thelma, Sherry, and Natalie will be doing the honors. I think I'd rather go to their party. We're not invited. No gal talk about everything, including how they take care of their female part, even though they can't see them anymore. I'd still rather go to their party, unless you can't see your parts either. Well, what's the see? Uh, Joseph Lester Crimine, may I continue? Yeah. Tell your story. Yeah, tell them about your, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell, tell them about your life. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, that's, uh, that other system down there doesn't work anymore either. Even the little blue pills have stopped uh, being medically effective, if you get my drift. Yeah. Some time ago. But the irrigation part works. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. All the fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the yeah. fucking I mean, time. Yeah, excuse my language. All the fucking oh, time is right. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I wish human plumbing was like house plumbing. You, you know, you call someone to fix the drip and well, they put in a new washer and bango, presto, whatever. Magic is fixed. But it doesn't work that way, you know, with our own pipes. But I don't have any complaints, you know, considering. When, when are you going to get to your story? Yeah. Everyone's going to die waiting for you yeah. to get to your story. Tell your story. Well, well, otherwise, we'll never get tired. All right, all right. Then, all right. When I was uh, uh, in my late 70s or thereabouts, well, I would go regularly, you know, quite often. To the bathroom? No. Oh. No. To the funeral of one of my cousins or a, or a, a friend or a former colleague. And I would see all my old friends there. I've heard this one. Yeah, I have a I have I don't remember. How do all funeral stories end? Tell your story. Uh, tell your story. Uh, we, we would reminisce, you know. It's about the only time I ever saw them. And uh, after a while, some of them stopped coming because. Because uh, what? Because uh, they couldn't drive anymore. Or, or they were taking care of a sickly wife, or they were sickly themselves. Yeah, the cold they died. Well, yeah, that too. Yeah. They started dying one by one by. One. Uh, when I was in my mid 80s, or uh, yeah, in my mid 80s, I went to a funeral for one of my other buddies, and there were only three of us there me, Cody, and Buster. Buster! Yeah. Was a bastard. Oh, come on, dude. Say something nice about that. <coughs> He was a nice bastard. Oh, yeah. Well, he was. And Buster said to the two of us, and he was crying, That's it. Oh, but what do you mean? I'm not coming anymore. What? To the funerals. I'm not coming anymore. Why, Buster? Yeah, it's too sad. Oh, people are dying. I can't bear it anymore. Uh, and Cody said he agreed with you that he wasn't coming anymore either. That spring we buried Cody. Cody, the cuddly cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Elmo. Ah, 
cocksuckers mixed up. <laughs> They're like a couple of kids who just discovered a new word for their pee pee. Good grief. It's okay. He's still out. Okay. Uh, Buster was as good as his word. He, he didn't come to Cody's funeral, but well, Cody didn't come either. What? He was cremated. Yes. Uh. Yeah, I heard that Buster was bedridden, that that was the official excuse, but I. I know the re I know the real reason he didn't come to Cody is going away from him. What was that? Uh, he was tired of saying goodbye. Yeah. And in that fall, I buried Buster too. Yeah, I had hoped that when Maria died, that uh, that um, uh, I'll help behind you guys. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, well, what I'm trying to say is, you, you got to learn to love other people. As See, Buster and Cody gave up. Uh, I don't blame them, but uh, well, I would go to our favorite coffee shop, and none of our friends were there anymore. No. Uh, I look around, and I didn't know anybody. It's the first time in my life I ever hated living so long. Yeah. Uh, and on my 90th birthday, I was having coffee. I was having coffee by myself, and. Uh, this old geezer. You, you call him you? Uh, this old geezer, uh, this old goat, uh, this old fuck, this old funny duddy. <laughs> okay, you made your point. Uh, he came up to me, he was uh, uh, maybe 75 or so. 73. He looked terrible for his age. <laughs> I look good. And he said, are you Mr. Perez, the baseball player? I look good for my age. <laughs> smooth skin. Hey, 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 I look good for my age. You know, I, I got smooth skin. Yeah, yeah for a white man. <laughs> don't be racist. White folks don't understand. They can never understand. Black folks can't be racist. You can't be racist. You have no power, and we have no power. Geez, you're beginning to sound like Al Sharpton. Oh. Yeah, and he said to me, are you Mr. Perez, the baseball player? And you remember? Yes, I did. And I said, yes, I am. And he sat down next to me, and then he said, uh, I mean, you said, I'm Lester. That's the Magnificent. And my dad used to bring me to the ballpark to see you pitch, man. Oh, man, you had a mean knuckleball. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think anybody would remember. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Those were the best years of my life. I remember one game in particular, you were going against Beto Ramirez. Oh, Beto, yeah. I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was sent down from the majors. And he couldn't hack it in the big, so but he was terrific. He, see, I only pitched one game against Beto, and he, yeah. well, he died what, uh, 20 years or so ago. Yeah. Good Lord, he had a great fastball. Yeah. <laughs> he was one of the greats. <laughs> but you beat him. <laughs> yeah. And he remembered. He, he, you remembered. Holy moly, you remembered. And then he asked if he could pay for my breakfast, and, and we sat there and talked baseball for an hour. What was it like? I mean, what was it really like, you know, back then? What was it like? Well, they, we, we were uh, semi pro team, mostly Mexican players, and uh, well, a couple of negritos, uh, black guys, and some Latin Americans from Texas, mostly. We bounced on across the south and the midwest, and we had to we had to stay in black hotels because the Negritos couldn't stay in the white joints, and, and, and the the the, the Morenitos, the dark-skinned Latins, couldn't either. See, those were different times. Oh yeah, not so different sometimes today. Yeah, so yeah. different sometimes. Yeah, I know, last time. I know. I know. Yeah. But I had it easy because I was light-skinned and could pass and. Besides, my parents didn't let me learn Spanish, so I, I didn't have any accent. Spanish? My Spanish is better than yours, you old gringo. Hey, them's fighting words, hey, Lester. You finish your story, Mr. Perez. Where was I? You were talking baseball, Bob. Oh, yeah, and when I got tired, 
you said, can I drive you home, Mr. Perez? And I, I said, I, I live just down the block. It's, it's just a block, and I, well, I could use the walking, and uh, I walked with you, and you yeah. did, yes. It was just a block, but it took us 15 minutes to get there. Yeah. See, see yeah. Uh, Lester here was a retired oil rig worker, right? Yeah, I, I used to work yeah. on show, I sure did. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that intrigued me, so I asked him what the work was and what, what it was like when they had fires and hurricanes. Oh. Yeah. And, yeah. and you came back the next week, and you brought six other guys with you, and they were all yeah. old, just like you. <laughs> I was one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were all 15, 20 years younger than I am. And they all loved baseball. Yeah. And they said they had heard about me when they were children. So, oh, we had a great time. Or at least I, I did. Yeah, we all had a good time. Yeah. 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 So, one of the guys asked me about the 1943 World Series between the Yankees and the Cardinals. Because I had mentioned the previous week to Lester here that I had attended one of the games, and 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 when I was stationed in the army in New York, and uh, well, they thought they knew their stuff. Oh, we did. No, they didn't. See, Lester here asked me if Joe DiMaggio had had a good series. Well, and I, I said no. No. Well, that's right. Why? He didn't play. He didn't play. Jump and Joe DiMaggio didn't, he didn't play? No, oh, he was in the army. And then another Joe, uh, Joseph here had heard that I once pinched against Enos Slaughter when I was in the semi-pros. And since Enos had made it up to St. Louis, well, uh, Joseph here said, uh, what, what about Enos? How, how do you do in the series? Well, Enos was fighting the good war too. Well, I was gentle when I corrected them. No, he wasn't. He was mean and condescending, and you treated us like we were stupid shits. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was not mean and condescending, but you were dumb shits. Well, uh, you have a point, yeah. and, and then when I got tired of talking and answering questions, I would ask them about the work they had done and about their families. See, I memorized the names of their children and grandchildren so I could ask them how they were doing. Yeah, that was my nice, I remember, that was my yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I meant I didn't have to talk so much. So I asked Joseph here about his granddaughter, the one he said was so beautiful, and he would go on and on and on and on. I didn't have to talk so much, I could relax. Yeah. You fell asleep. Did yeah, I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that happens a lot nowadays. And my new friends were back the next week with some other old fellows. And uh, our waitress, Janie, reserved a large table in back for the Thursday Baseball Club, which was the name she had given us. Yeah. These men have brought me great joy. Yeah. Yeah, they've revived my spirit. They made me look forward to the next week and the week after that. And they're probably the reason that I'm still here, yeah. coughing my guts out eating my donuts, drinking my Metamucil, and pissing all the time. Your, your point is... Uh, my point? Your point. Oh, well, the reason I'm telling you, all of you this is, you older guys need to get some younger friends. You, uh, don't discard the old ones, that's not what I'm saying. When the time comes, bury them, and, and say nice things about them. But, but don't be like Buster and Cody, they gave up on life. Turns out they didn't have to. Maybe uh, uh, Miss Cardenas, is that what you had in mind Cardi for this little talk? Cardigan. Yes? She's not back yet. Uh, 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 I want to thank all of you for listening to me, including the two men in the back row who fell asleep. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, Miss Carnegie might want to make sure they are asleep. <laughs> so if you have any other questions, come down after the meeting and talk to me. Just make sure you're loud, because I forgot to bring my hearing aids. Uh, your turn, Lester. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you.
My story is not as heartwarming as yours. Well, not everyone's as nice as I am, Lester. Uh, besides, life is not a bowl of cherries, despite what the song says. That's certainly true. Yeah. You know, Hollywood sold us on the uh, happy ending. Yeah. Boy meets girl, they fall in love, they get married, they have children, uh, and comfort to happen. And you know, in every story, there's got to be a conflict. Let me get back again. The end. Can we go to our homes now? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. What Hollywood doesn't tell you, no, apparently not. What they don't tell you is that the end, the real end, is never happy. Huh? No, the end, the real end, is when you die. I didn't know about this, Miss Cardenas, I swear. See, see, one of these days, that couple, they won't be a couple anymore. One of them will die. And then uh, the other will be a widow, a widower, and, you know, I, I, I know it's depressing, but... No shit, Doc. What did I tell you about overdoing that line? <laughs> well, as my toothless old grandmother used to say, it takes an old person who has walked the world to tell the truth, and that would be me. This is my story. <laughs> My wife and I had a good marriage. And we were facing the retirement years at 65, and, and we were going to travel and see the world and do all the things we had postponed while we were raising a family. Right, here it comes. Well, well yeah, see, I, I already skipped the unhappiness. Uh -uh. The unhappiness while raising a family. You know, we had two children, Margaret and Matthew. Margaret died of childhood leukemia. We split our hearts right down in the middle. And then Matthew, he took it hard too. And then in his teenage years, he started experimenting with drugs and he died of overdose at 32. Our hearts, man, what hearts? Do I need to go any further? No, that's enough. You're going to depress everybody to the point of mass suicide, Lester. You're going to make Jonestown look like Barnum and Bailey. But we made the best of it. You know, we planned to travel to Europe, to Greece, to Ireland, the Parthenon, Rome, Italy, the Vatican, the Colosseum, and see all the beautiful churches and ancient ruins. Oh, God. We never made it. Judah died of a heart attack one month before retirement. Oh, Jesus, Lester. Oh, man. I was all alone. I mean alone. We had been devoted to each other. We had no close relatives, no close friends. Uh, I was alone. And then you met me? No, no. No? no, no. That, that came later. All alone, yeah. But you know, you, you can't give up. Oh, it's going to be an uplifting story. I marched on. Yeah. I joined the reading club. I went to the gym. Yeah. I started to want to be healthier. I changed my diet. I started walking. I lost weight. I even gave up drinking. Well, that's always a big mistake. <laughs> I, I, I even gave up coffee. I don't know why I did that. Neither do I. <laughs> you eat your donuts with. It tastes like <laughs> with milk. Yeah. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. And just when I thought nothing worse could happen. God, somebody had me raise a blade. <laughs> <laughs> Took my car to the shop. They gave me a 40,000 mile check. Is that where this story's going? A lube job? <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, the dealer up comes in the waiting room and gives me a strange look. Right, he was probably just concerned because you looked so all alone. Mr. Perez, I listened to your story respectfully. No, you didn't. You interrupted and made jokes. You're going to tragedy. Oh, God, it's a tragedy. 
But he didn't stop by me. He didn't, the rep. he didn't stop by me. He went straight to the phone, made a call, and then he periodically kept looking at me. He's always turning, looking at me. Hey, we got this crazy looking lonely old guy in the repair shop lobby, and he's driving this really expensive car that he obviously can't afford because he's blacker than burnt logs. He didn't really say that, did he? Oh, I, 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 I guess not, but after a while, I, I imagine that, but, but I'm getting ahead of the story. So I'm sitting there thinking, my car must be in really terrible condition. I mean, if it, it's in that bad of shape, I, I can get it fixed. I can afford it. And then if it's unfixable, well, damn it, I'll buy me a new one. I got money. What I'm saving it for? No big deal. Half hour later, a sheriff deputy. Whoa, nothing. <laughs> the sheriff did They're walking toward me, and I'm thinking, okay, not against the law for a black man to drive a Mercedes Benz CLS Fodor. Well, it is Waller County. <laughs> <laughs> Team WAA. What's that supposed to be? Driving while African American. Anyway, the sheriff did come to me, and he had that I've been in an accident. I'm afraid you're going to have to ask you to come downtown, sir. For what, I ask? Uh, the repair people fed, uh, found an arm stuck to the undercarriage of your car. An arm or what? You know, I asked him. A human arm, sir. Oh, my God. It was a child's arm. A little boy's arm. A little white boy's arm. Well, you're in a whole lot of trouble now, boy. Oh, man. They figured the arm had been under the undercarriage for over a month. And they questioned me for a long time. And, and you know, I, I can remember hitting anything, let alone a, a little boy. I, I'm from old, but I will remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they questioned me for hours, man, but I had nothing to tell them. I was just as surprised as the mechanic who found the arm under the car in the first place. Leslie, you never mentioned this. Why would I? And then, yeah, upstairs. Uh, you're free to go, sir. Man, and then. Well, we advise you not to leave the immediate area until the investigation clears you. That's when I met you. Man, you have no idea what that meant. You know, in a way, you saved me. You gave me a reason to forget and something to look forward to. You know what those Thursday brunches and then meeting Mr. Baseball with you? Oh, God, man, what a blessing, what a blessing. But I, I got to tell you guys, you know, even now, I don't see the well. well. Of course not. I, 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 I keep thinking about that poor kid. Wondering what happened to the, to the rest of his body. And wondering if, if his parent missing him. And trying to figure out if I ran over and killed him a car, or was he already dead when I ran over him? You know, they never found out who he was. Mystery. You gotta talk to somebody, Lester. Oh, I, you know, I can talk to an attorney. I can protect myself, you know. No, I mean, professionally, this, this can kill you. Oh, don't I know? And I have nightmares. I mean, I, I wake up screaming, man. And I can hear you, Lester, at night. You can hear me? Uh, I don't mean to make light of it, no. So, you see what I mean? And I thought that the, the only thing I had left was my own death. Oh, I was wrong. But I wish I'd been right.
had too much to drink last week. Oh, thank God. Is that your story for tonight, Joseph? Yes. Look, uh, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to, to go through all that. No, 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 no. It's all right, Lester. You got to laugh at it. That's important. But uh, I have the name, name of somebody you might want to see. A shrink? Yeah. Someone you trust? With my life. You saw my shrink? Don't tell anybody, okay? Well, you just told all these men in this retirement home. Uh, Leslie, if you don't like history, I'll give you the name of mine. And, and mine knows what it's like to be a, a minority. Mine's from Nigeria. No oh, shit. <laughs> uh, so, Joseph, you ate too much to drink last week? I was so happy. Oh. Yeah. My granddaughter got married. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. She's my only grandchild. Yeah. She got yeah. married. I didn't expect it to ever happen. But why? You always said she was such a beautiful yeah. child. Well, I lied about that. Huh? She's oh. not very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you said you had a sex to buy her. Yeah, I lied about that, too. Oh. She's overweight. Oh, so come on, you got to be kind. And that's your own no, friend. No, no, I'm not being mean. Oh. No, she's, uh, she's kind of plain and she's a little chubby. But, uh, those are just the facts of life. Her life. Her sad life. Up until recently, when she met this guy, Kurt, and fell in love with her. Oh, yeah. I could see it in his eyes. What, 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 what did you see? see? He really loves her. Oh, 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 oh. You know, I can see it, and it makes me so happy. Of course so he very does. happy. Yeah, of course he does, yes. Family's important. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess that's the point of my story. Friends are wonderful, but stay tight with your children and your grandchildren, yeah. even if they yeah. want to push you away. Yeah. Yeah. My wife died of cancer when she was 57, and our son was killed in the first Gulf War, but Diane is my family lifeline. Yeah. She was getting married, so I had too much to drink last week. Uh, you're, you're starting to repeat yourself. <laughs> it's all right, Lester. Repeating yourself in this place is not a detriment to life. Ain't that the truth? Man. And when I, when I rose to toast him at the wedding, I got a little emotional and I started to cry. Oh, hell no! Don't that what happens at weddings, man? Yeah, that's right, yeah. You're just saying that to make me feel good. But oh, I know I made a fool of myself. You know, too nobody sensitive. said anything about it, but I know I made a fool of myself. You're being too sensitive, Joe. Yeah. I had no idea you were such a citizen man. Yeah. Told me again, a shrink, too. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to uh, let him know I was sorry about that. But, uh, but uh, it was never a proper time, so I didn't do it. I wanted to. I wanted to let him know I was sorry for embarrassing them, but I didn't. Well, I bet they understood. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But instead of going home and getting sober, you know, yeah. I decided to go to the bar and get myself another drink. Oh, oh. shit. <laughs> So as I said, apparently way too many times, you know, I had too much to drink last week. Yeah, I guess you did. Yeah. And the thing was, I didn't realize how drunk I was. And drunks never do. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was doing all right. Well, we always do, don't we? But when I got up to the bartender, you know, at the bar, I still, uh, that's when I realized how drunk I was, because instead of saying uh, bourbon and rocks, I was slurring my words. Garbling my words. Bob Tina, give me a bagels and locks. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I told him to forget it. You know, I, I needed to sober up. I needed to pee. You don't say pee in front of an old man. An old man's like turning on the faucet. You can't keep still. <laughs> so I uh, made my way through the crowd to go to the bathroom. And that's when I stumbled and fell. Oh, shit. But everybody saw me. Now I was more embarrassed than ever. Uh, how can I do this to my granddaughter? So I started to cry all over again. And this huge crowd gathered around me. And they were feeling concerned about me. And through, the, through the haze, I could make out Kurt. He's extending a hand to me. You okay, Granddad? <laughs> Granddaddy called me. <laughs> so, uh, 
course, I wanted to cry even more. But I had to be strong. I couldn't make it even worse. So I took his hand and I stood up. As drunk as you were? Yeah, I, I was wobbly, but I was standing. You were hurt, Granddad? No, I, I could see that I was all right. No, nothing was broken, there were no cuts. The only thing bruised was my ego. Uh, so uh, the crowd was moving away. Nothing left to see. The drunk old man was standing up. The show was over. I'll go with you into the bathroom, Granddad. Make sure you're okay. I knew better than to turn down his offer. Yeah. So he followed me and made sure I didn't fall over. I got to the urinal and I started peeing. And I had to hold on to the pipes to make sure I didn't fall over again because the room was spinning. Ah, oh, man. How awful that would have been, you know. Falling down and sliding around and all that piss on the Oh floor. my God! <laughs> when I was done, when I was finally done, I'm all zipped up. Uh, Kurt put his arm around my shoulder and walked me back to the table. Where yeah. his, his beautiful, beautiful bride was waiting yeah. for us. That's the kind of bride. Oh man. So he ordered me some coffee and then he said, what do you say? Granddad, I hope you wrote down that toast because I want you to email it to me. I'll print it on some good paper and yeah. put it in a frame for our house. It'll be the first thing we put on our walls. Oh. Yeah, I had too much to drink last week. And? Oh. Yeah. Come on. Come on. I had too much to drink last week. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs>